And here are a few things they did to become pesticide free. So the first thing they did is that they did a diagnosis and they identified all the spaces where they had to put pesticides, all the green spaces they had, all the roads where they had to do stuff. And they decided how many people worked for them and what their practices were. And then, then they define their new objectives. For example, in two years, we want to reduce by 50%. In five years, we want to be pesticide free. And they got help from the water agency to finance them. That's something that we have in France. We can call the public water agency to to put money for the, the diagnosis. And they, they really communicated in advance really early to the citizens and also to the workers that they wanted to go pesticide free and that they will do it for their health because it was better. Because if you don't tell the citizens, then they might take it in a bad way or they might be against it. So they really raised awareness among citizens, but also among the workers, because for the workers, it would mean completely changing the way they work. Um, so they really try to work together, elected people, technicians, uh, citizens, and um, they they did some trainings for the for the workers. That is also really really important because everybody can spray pesticides, but not everybody can really work in a garden, and and that's a completely way a completely different way of working. So they they really put money into trainings, and also they pull together tools, practices, they exchange the cities that are next to another, they had tools shared together, they had, oh, you do like this and I do like that, or maybe I could try this way, and that's also really important. And in the end, they choose their alternative method to weed. There are a lot of different alternatives to do it. And today, we have a lot of uh, pesticide-free towns. The map here is a map from our campaign uh, the, the greener it is, the, the more pesticide-free they are. Uh, and this is a map that we, where we are asking towns to register and to tell them where they are regarding pesticide use. So the, the white spaces, it's not because they use pesticide, it's just that maybe they didn't hear about our campaigns. But we know that there are more than 3,000 3, uh, towns that are reducing their pesticide use, and we know that there are more than 1,000 that are already pesticide-free. Um, so as you can see, there are a lot of initiatives. We have this campaign, but there, is also, there are also the charters, the, national, the regional charters, where NGOs are helping towns to go pesticide-free, and they are giving them the 1B, 2Bs, 3Bs. And if one town has 3Bs, the, the town next to, to it will want to be also 3Bs and will go further with the reducing use of pesticide. The red one, it means that they use pesticide. They, some of them answered that they use pesticide on a regular basis. Um, and we also have other actors such as NGOs that are really working with the towns to help them go pesticide free, such as Planticity or Nature Pipe. Those are the NGOs working with the towns. But also the national government played a role because the Ministry of Environment really got engaged in the pesticide-free uh, campaigns because it was inscripted in the law also, but still they did something. They did some national campaigns focused on non-professional gardeners and on towns so that they could reduce the use of pesticide. You can see the, the two. Those two are posters from campaigns from the national government. And also, in 2014, the Minister of Environment, Ségolène Royal, who is really against pesticides, um, she launched a, a national label called Tersen, uh, where the, the towns that are labeled Tersen are really zero pesticide. They, they are pesticide-free totally, even sports field, even cemeteries, everything. And now they, are, they were... One ceremony of uh, of labeling, I think they labeled more than 400 towns, and there will be another one before the end of the year. I think they are going to label more than 100 new cities, and there will be others. And we also have now inscripted in the law, in the French law, that uh, from the 1st of January 2007, 
all cities will have to be pesticide free. So that's a law that was passed in 2014. Uh, it says that yeah, it, the town will have to stop using pesticide by January 2017, and then the non-professional will have to stop buying pesticide, and pesticide will be forbidden to buy for the private individuals. Uh, so that's a really good thing and a very big thing. The only problem is that some areas are not concerned by the law, and also that they won't be any money sanctions if a city doesn't still use pesticide. So we don't really know how this is going to work uh, from the next 1st of January on. But still, it's written in the law, and more, the more towns are going pesticide-free, so we know that it's going to get bigger and bigger, and if more and more cities start it, then we'll reach the all cities pesticide-free in France in a few maybe years.